delay, now we're going to fix the first part. And as Peter will explain, the new questions are going live in Planning Portal quite soon. So we'll be starting in the new year to be testing when the new information is in Planning Portal, how that transfers uh, all the way through the system. Um, and as we also mentioned, we are still integrating with a few of the back office providers who are a little slower on the uptake, including Northgate, but we're, we're in process with them. And then really importantly, what does this data look like at the end? When the system is live, how are you gonna be able to understand it, play with it, use it for AMRs, use it for other purposes? Uh, and we're doing that with a software called Kibana, which we're gonna demo for you. Hopefully you didn't see the big spoiler moments ago <laughs> when there were graphs on the screen showing Kibana. Um, but the, the really important thing about Kibana is that it's uh, completely uh, tailored, it can be tailored to whatever needs your Gura has for reporting. So we'll show you some examples of that right now. That easy to see, it's a little blurry. Well, well we're going into the live version. Yeah. Simon, so this is, this is where this entire event is gonna go really long. You thought everything going outside <laughs> this was the, the terrible bit, but this is where it all fall, falls down. So the point of Kibana is that it's a live dashboard that you can kind of chop and change. What's, the, what's that phrase? You can build to meet your own requirements. Yes. Um, and so, say for example, in City Hall, we'll be we'll be looking to have a live AMR for the whole of London as a big big screen in reception. So every morning I can raise a glass of champagne as I walk past and walk past <laughs> another planning commission somewhere. Um, and if you were a borough, then you could have your own you know, variety of questions or dashboard type graphs wherever you wanted it for any of your leaders, for anybody who was interested, live updates in real time. What, one important thing about this as well is if that number goes to 3,955, there's another dot on the map. Um, and because it's a kind of modern piece of data software, you can start to do quite clever things with it. So you could have a gong go off in your office if you wanted. An automated, you know, everyone's an e-gong when an application comes in. But you get the point there. That the point is that you can start to do really clever things when you have the sort of plumbing and infrastructure in place to do things a little bit differently. And one of the things Kibana does is that you ask questions that will help you do your job more easily, more consistently, in, a, in an easier manner, hopefully. And we should say, obviously, this is free and public. So you will have access to, to build these, and it will be free and open to you. So okay. go on, prove away. So these are a series of different dashboards, and they're all basically linked together. So as you can see at the moment, we've got nearly 4,000 records in the whole database. And these are historic records. These are just for testing purposes. Yeah, obviously. and those are split across uh, Hillingdon, Havering, Croydon, and the default one is how it's left, but it's just test data for now. So when you highlight on one of the on the graphs um, and you click on it, it will then focus on Hillingdon and what you notice is that everything else changes around it. So there are, of the 4,000, over 2,000 are for Hillingdon alone. Um, and then what you could do is you could further, further filter it. So what, you've no, what you may notice is as I clicked on that, we've got a filter up here which will make, and will add further filters to it. And then you can just remove them to, to go back to where you were. So if I just go back to that one and then <coughs> if I want to see, so these, this one here is a list of the boroughs uh, in Hillingdon, so if I want to see what is happening in Uxbridge South. The parishes or the wards. This is the, the wards. Yeah. 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 I can click on that, uh, save it, and then it tells me that there's 112 that are in that, in that particular ward. Um, and then you can see further down that the decisions bar tells you that split, and that will split will change if you're just looking at Hillingdon or just looking at all the boroughs or one particular borough. So you can see the kind of breakdown of, of those decisions for that ward. Um, what we can also do is further down here, this is a, uh, a list, uh, a kind of comparison pie chart based on the decision process. So we can see um, of the ones in that ward, um, how many were delegated and how many went to committee. You can see the percentage breakdown there. Um, and then it also breaks down in this, so this segment here is based on just the committee one. So of that committee one, you've got uh, so many that were approved, so many with no further action, and then a number were refused or withdrawn. You can kind of start to get a bit of a breakdown of the data. Um, you can go to full screen for any of the charts, and then what you can do as well if you want to try and download the data, is you can just inspect it, and then that will give you a breakdown uh, like this, so say I just want to look at the delegated <coughs> ones in more detail, I can then download that CSV, 
can play with the data as much as I want to. Well, well, one of the best examples of this is at, at the moment we don't have all of the additional fields we were talking about earlier in, which is still proving the concept of planning portal. Um, when this project goes live, we'll have all of that information. And the point is it also should be way more accessible for citizens who want to put a challenge. Say, um, say I'm a citizen, I live on the uh, borough line between Hackney and Tower Hamlets, which I actually do, um, and I'm trying to find information about an application, but I can't find it through the system because it's kind of hard. Um, and again, this was a problem I had. Um, I can click on the map, I can click the application, and I'll be able to see all of the information without digging through the documents that relate to that, and I'll be put into the new data schema. So I'll be able to see how many homes is being built, all of that information, and also if I want to look and say, I don't understand the planning sector that much, but I care about affordable homes, and click on Hackney, and I can see what percentage of affordable homes by Fenton is being delivered, for example. And because Kibana is, uh, you can, you can uh, tailor it to your own needs, you were a borough that was really interested in parking base for whatever reason. You could have a dashboard just about parking base because that's one of the questions that we're adding to the planning application. If you're interested only in units or the breakdown of tenure, you could have a, a dashboard around tenure. So there's all kinds of different options that you can develop with our help um, once the data is live and the new fields are being collected. So just so the message doesn't get lost anywhere, we very quickly build these um, just to show you the theory behind how it works. What's important to you and your borough is what we can build a dashboard with you around. So this is just something that we've done. Please don't think that this is the end product by a million miles, but it's a proof of concept. So it's the smallest? Okay. I think it just took, how long did this take to build, Craig? Yesterday and a bit this morning. Oh, wow. So Craig is our Kibana guru, just so we're clear. But this is one of the first ones we've ever built, so we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll get even faster. And if you, if you can imagine how long it would have taken to collect this information manually or consolidate it some other way, even a half a day to build the dashboard, or a day and a half, or whatever it is, for a number of them. I will be encouraging Boris to have live AMRs as well, just because I think it's quite an interesting concept. But it, it might take some brain Boris to have a go. Mm -hmm. um, should we move on with the rest of them? So excited about Kibana, we could just sit here and talk to you about it. Okay, so just to touch on a few of our big challenges. Um, the big weakness in this project is going to be around paper applications. We are the first people that we can find that have ever actually really tried to understand how many paper applications are made in this city. Um, interestingly, the planning portal don't know the answer to this because, of course, they only ever see one side of the picture. So this, this shows you, in essence, um, where the, the, the real balance is. We had 23 boroughs respond very kindly to provide us data in the format we were asking for. Um, as you can see, the percentage of applications of particular types is actually surprisingly low across London. It's di very different for different boroughs, but um, the big one at the bottom, prior approvals, is predominantly because there's no other way of submitting quite a few of them. So <laughs> this is being resolved through, through the work that planning portal are doing at the moment. And just because I know that somebody from the planning portal accidentally answered a question wrong as a meeting, they are taking all of the prior approval types online when they launch them. It's not just one or two. So that's to say, if you're if you're a borough that receives most of your prior prior approvals in paper form because there's no other option. By the, the, the point when we launch the new year, there will be another option. And then the second one to comment on is reserved matters. Now, obviously, we're going to have to pick off each of these in turn to make this work. Um, so we are pushing very gently with a lot of different people to try and come up with a strategy to reduce paper submissions. But the second biggest one is actually the giveaway, which is reserved matters. Um, which tend to relate to major applications, which then you have all the issues of sizes of documents that are allowed through firewalls at local authorities and the historic restrictions of the planning portal. Um, we're working on that. That's going to be an interesting one to unpick, but that's in our size. Any other ones you want to add? Timetabling of our go live. Now, this is where it starts to get quite interesting. Um, we are in Perda at the moment, obviously, which causes us all challenges. 
Um, we have a second period of herbs being dug in this building, being the mayor's elections in May. So, <laughs> whilst we will be looking to start collecting data as soon as, lo as the plan portal will start collecting it, we may not be in a position to really say this project's finished and gone live in its current iteration until after the elections. So it will be sometime, well, depends on what the data shows. If the data shows that the current advice we've been giving to, to the Mayor's Office is, is accurate, then, uh, then we'll be looking to release the data pretty hot on the heels of the Mayor election. If, however, we start to see some really significant changes and really significant variances, we're going to have to explore what that means, in which case we're really starting to move towards June to get, get it all packed up. Yeah. So I've talked about PERDA. This also means that we've got a bit of a challenge because everyone's locked down giving us their responses to the two-thirds majority piece. Which we, to, for those who don't know, um, the data standard is taking effect by two thirds of boroughs uh, giving their consent to this happening. And we've, you know, we've done all the work to get their consent. Now it's just the paperwork stamp that we need to to move forward. So, uh, the chief exec has written to the to the chief exec or the chief exec of the GLA has written to the chief exec of all of the boroughs in London that haven't yet responded and asked them to respond um, before Christmas. So after, so after the twelfth, after the general election. So that's the position we're in. And the mayor has previously written to all the leaders. So if you're from a borough, your leader will have received a, a letter.